Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Crystal, and this is my channel about cross stitch. I forgot something, so I had to restart this, and I was running around and catch your breath. Um, today is Monday, November 16th. It's only been a week. I made it back. I finally in my groove. Um, but how crazy is it that it's the middle of November? I It's just so crazy. For me, this year is just gone. But I am back with what will probably be a shorter video because it's only a week's worth of stuff. So I have FFOs, whips, almost no haul, but a tiny bit of haul and a giveaway at the end. So um, let's get into it. I have a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, last video I talked about the Stitching Book Club. Yeah, last video, I believe. So Stitching Book Club is on Instagram, and you read a book, and you stitch a pattern. It's like a mystery pattern. You stitch along with reading the book. So the link for that will be down below. It is available now. I got mine. She has a shop on Etsy. Um, so I will link her Etsy shop down below, but if you want more information about it on Instagram, it's Stitching Book Club. We're reading A Christmas Carol, and I'm super excited. I have struggled with salves recently, <laughs> and I think December will be no exception because it's December, um, but A Christmas Carol is really small, and she said that the piece of fabric you need for the for you know, the stitch along is only eight by eight inches. So that sounds small and totally attainable. <laughs> so I'm really excited that my first stitching book club item is going to be small. So I will leave that linked below. Um, there are seven colors, DMC, eight by eight piece of fabric, and then you receive through email, I think it's four times, possibly, don't quote me on that. Um, pieces of the thing. Um, so that's the first thing. The next thing is Sambre stitches. I'm going to spell it because it doesn't, it doesn't sound like Sambre. Sambre. It's S-A-M-B-R-I-E stitches on Instagram. She's fantastic. She has a floss tube. She's the one that does all of the interviews with floss tubers. Um, but I have two pieces of information from her. The first is this Thursday, November 19th at 2.30 Pacific time. I want to say that clearly. 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. Pacific time. Because so she's on the west part of our country. She is having a online Friendsgiving like live video party. So tune into that. I will leave her YouTube linked below. Um, there is more information about it, I believe, on Instagram. And then also on Instagram, she posted, and I'm totally in for this. She posted something like, hey, let's do an ornament every month in 2021. I try and do that anyway, but she, I don't know who created the hashtag, but the hashtag is hashtag monthly orny, O-R-N-I-E, monthly orny sal. So I am totally in for that next month. Um, I don't know what I'm going to stitch all year, but I know I'm going to start with the Secret Santa series by Hands On Design. So monthly orny sal, Follow along with that. Um, one more little thing I wanted to mention is last week I uh, filmed and uploaded two videos going through my whip kitted, kind of like a what's in the bin video. So I did two parts for the first bin and I will be filming and uploading two parts for the next bin pr probably Friday. It'll probably go up Friday. Um, but if you haven't seen those other two, 
it was fun to look back at like things I started this year, things I got that were like really important to me and I really, really wanted to do them, um, that I had kind of bagged up and <laughs> haven't started. But that was fun to look through. So I will be doing the next bin later this week. So keep keep an eye out for that. All right, I think that's all my news. All of my things I wanted to mention. I did have some FFOs um, also last week. Nope. When's that going up? I think it's going up this Wednesday. I filmed a video, very like rough video, guys. I don't have a good setup. I don't have like a arm for my camera and all of that. I don't have great lighting, clearly. Um, but I FFO'd some ornaments that have been in my, and there goes a street sweeper. Pardon if that's very loud. Um, but I have a, a drawer of things I have finished that need to be FFO'd. My drawer of shame. So I had these three ornaments. Goodwill to all. Glad tidings. And great joy. So what I did was I filmed just like a on my cell phone on my cell phone guys it was a little rough it's very short video on how I finished all three of these and I have the link for this little charm linked under the video and that will go live this Wednesday so keep an eye out for that and I think yes now I can move on to whips. I'm trying to follow my notes so I don't forget anything because I had a lot of stuff I wanted to mention today. All right, first whip is I had said a while back that I wanted to do a strand a day project. So that was a project that I would put a strand of floss in every single day before I started on my pattern for the day. And the first one I'm working on is mistletoe lane. And I did a strand a day. Um, it's, st I still, I can't believe it's still not done. Um, that house, that house, it's going to be so cute. And I'm so sorry it's not ironed. It's going right back in its hoop. And um, <coughs> I am going to go put a strand of floss in it and then move on to my, <coughs> pardon me. I have a tickle. Um, and then I'll move on to my stitching for the day. So there's my progress on Mistletoe Lane. This was a mystery stitch along from Fat Quarter Shop. You can get the pattern as one whole pattern now. Oh good, I need to move my hoop anyway. Perfect timing, huh? I probably also need a bigger hoop, but it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Um, so I will leave that link below. This is being stitched on 14 count graceful gray Ada. I have said this before. I only stitch on Ada so far. Yeah, that's graceful gray. It's looking kind of white here, but I love it. Um, I only stitch on Ada mainly because it's easy and honestly, no one in my family knows or cares that there is fancier fabric out there. I also only use DMC because I like to kit up a lot of things and I have two little kids. This hobby can get very expensive, I feel like, if um, if you're using fancy floss and fancy linen all the time. So for now, never say never, but for now, I'm just sticking with my designer project bag, uh, Ada, and DMC. Keeps the cost low, and it's beautiful in the end. So it doesn't really matter. You do you, I'll do me. All right, my next whip is on a scroll frame. 
but I am doing boop, 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 boop. where are you this is an organized mess organized mess I am doing the little sheep virtues Ooh, that's the glare um, from Little House Needleworks as one big piece and I am putting in the middle this one by Country Cottage Needleworks. It's called Sheep in the Meadow. So this one's in the middle and then the other 12 go around it. So I try and work on this every week. And I finally, finally figured out how to use a scroll frame. So it is on, is this right? Yep. There it is. So last month I did peace as I peek, peek under there. This month I am working on courage. And then you can see up at the top, I have started sheep in the meadow. Um, I love this piece. This is on 18 count. I don't know. Something I tea dyed a little bit. I'm using one strand of floss. That's why 18 count is my favorite because I can use just one strand. So I had one of these dealios. I just wrapped it around and I just stick my needle on there. Um, when I'm not using it. So this piece I'm going to work on again this week, but I'm, it's going to go in a pillowcase and then between the dresser and the wall, there's a space like this wide and I'm going to stick my pillowcases with all of my scroll frames in it. I have bought a lot of scroll frames from the thrift shop. I just haven't been able to figure out how um, how to get things on them because they didn't come with webbing. So I finally figured it out. I used, I should probably say, I used, oh, I think it's from American Dreams. I will leave the two pieces linked below. One piece is, it's two pieces of Velcro and they come in a roll and you put the fuzzy side on the scroll rod and then you put the loop side on your stitched piece. Now it's very, very thin. It's like five eighths of an inch. It's not big at all, so it won't take up a whole ton of your margin, but you put it at the very, you know, very bottom and then they Velcro together and you can scroll it up. And then when you're done, you just, cut that off the bottom of your fabric because um, it doesn't peel off very easily. Um, so because of that, I feel like it's probably really important to leave a two inch or three inch margin on your piece. And I'm only using the scroll frames for larger pieces, like a series. Um, but yeah, I finally found the two pieces I needed to actually use as scroll rods. I have a stand, it's in my room right now, that I got at an estate sale for $4. So I have no idea what brand it is, but that was fun. That was fun to finally use last night. All right, next piece is another kind of the same situation. I am also doing Little House Needleworks Early Americans. Where are you? Where, where, where? So this is the John Hancock block. The little guy. This is a giant plant next to that little guy. <laughs> um, this one is going to go on some scroll rods. It's, it's even bigger. This is on four, 14 count. Uh, he died something or other. <clears throat> can you see that? So first I did the freedom block. I don't know what y'all can see. 
first I did freedom last month. And then this month I'm working on John Hancock. So he's super cute. I am hoping to finish the block this week and then next week work on the border that goes above this block. And I am using the border by Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher on Instagram. She just just Google Vonna Pfeiffer Early Americans. Um, border and she has made it free for you to use she just asks that you give her credit because she is the one that designed the border that goes to it um so the way i have scheduled my month is like every week is a week and then so like every saturday i work on early americans um for Patriotic stitching and those are the hashtags. Hashtag patriotic stitching and hashtag stars and stripes Saturday. <clears throat> so if there's four Saturdays in a month, my hope is to get the little block done in three of those Saturdays and then the last Saturday of the month work on whatever part of the border I have for the whole main piece from Vana. So that is the hope this week that I will finish the block. What's next? Okay. I only have two more whips. So my next whip was Quilty Love. I have talked ad nauseum about this. This is my fifth start of Quilty Love. Um, not ironed. I'm so sorry guys. I don't own an ironing board. So when I want to iron something on the counter, I put a towel, like I fold a towel in half and get out the iron and I, I really need to get an ironing board, but. So this is my work on Quilty Love Christmas edition. Um, so I, did I have that in last time? No. So I did this the little three hearts. I don't know. What did I have in last time? I can't remember. And I started this block. There were some days this week that I just, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling stitching at all. Um, I did a lot of other projects around the house. We are repainting everything that's white. Uh, all the furniture that's white we had done in like a white latex paint. So we are redoing all all the white furniture in white chalk paint. And the only thing I have left to do is the actual table base, this table base. Um, so I'm gonna do that this afternoon. That took a lot out of me. And then y'all can't see it, but I am looking right at our playroom and <clears throat> my son is spoiled, <laughs> rotten. Spoiled rotten. Um, and I think I talked about this back when we did family vlogs. That they're way back in the beginning of the channel. Um, I, I started college when he was like a year old. And he stayed home with me. And I would take like five classes a semester. <laughs> and I did it all online. But that was really challenging to do um, with him home. He stopped napping. He dropped his for total tangent. Um, if you don't care, fast forward like a minute. Um, he dropped his first nap when he was like nine months old. He dropped his second nap when he turned a year old. It was very frustrating. But I felt guilty doing schoolwork with him home and to like combat that guilt every toy that I found on clearance or at the thrift store I bought for him I bought I bought for him my mother-in-law bought him a ton of stuff my mom bought him a ton of stuff 
The playroom was, so all of that to say, <laughs> the playroom was a nightmare. And so we put up shelving, stacked all of the totes on their own shelves. So it's not like you have to move something to get to something. So also I don't get rid of anything. I'm kind of a hoarder. Not really, but I keep stuff like we still have all the Duplos. We still have all the little people. He'll be six in March. I keep all of that because I have friends with much younger children, like two year olds. Um, I have a friend that just had babies. Um, so when they come over to play, I can get those bins down and their kids have something to play with in my house, not just Legos and swords. So those two projects, that was the longest tangent to say, those two projects really kept my focus this week. Um, on top of, I still had seven pumpkins that I needed to de-seed so that I could roast them. So de-seeding pumpkins is my least favorite thing to do. Um, but we had seven that needed to get done this last week before they started getting gross. So I wasn't really feeling like stitching. I did get quite a bit done, but it, it was hard for it to keep my focus this week. So my last whip to show you is... Seasons in Chalk Art Winter. Sorry, pardon the <laughs> weird little notes. Uh, pardon the Sharpie. This is my working copy. This is from the February 2016 Just Cross Stitch issue. This is a design. This is from Hands On Design, artwork by Priscilla Blaine. And I have done... Spring, patriotic, and fall is up, which you can't see because it's so dark over there. This one I made a ton of progress on. <clears throat> My goal is to finish this by the end of November. Because the day after Thanksgiving, we switch over to Christmas. But I got, so I guess I can just fold it in half. I got it half done. The halfway point. So I don't know if I talked about this. I am an absolute ding dong. This piece of fabric is already kind of tight. I'm a center starter. And so I started in the center and I got to like here and I was like, okay, that's a weird bottom. And then I looked on the third page in the magazine. Yeah. Check the third page where it had like the floss and stuff, like the floss list. And there was a whole bottom part of the pattern. <laughs> So that is a really small, it'll be fine. But man, was I sweating bullets. So look at that little snowman in that house. That is a big snowman next to that little. So all I have left is the T-E-R and the word winter and then more snowflakes and then this swirly business and three snowflakes on the bottom. So the goal is to get this done by Thanksgiving because... The day after Thanksgiving, we decorate for Christmas. It's been a nine year long argument about when we put the Christmas tree up. This year I gave up. I don't care. It's just not worth it. I don't care. So that is all of my whips. I have one tiny piece of haul and I wanted to mention this. Um, so later this month, I am starting the Three Little Words series from Lizzie Kate. You can get these off of One, Two, Three Stitch. I am I have a sow that I'm doing with it. I think it's Three Little Words with the let the number three little words B day sell. Yes. Hashtag three with the number little words B day sell. So I went ahead and I needed to get my fabric for this. So I went and found the three little words border chart from Lizzie Kate's website so that I could get my dimensions for how much 
fabric I need. So I will leave this linked below um, the border chart. I found out there's another, she did like a freebie to go along with these. So there are seven, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are seven. And then she designed an eighth, like a freebie, but only seven fit in this. And I don't want to add, like, I don't want to add and rechart and whatever. So I'm just going to leave the freebie out. I might stitch it by itself. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I would like to have it, but I don't know. So that's getting started on the 29th and I needed fabric. bags are hard to open. I needed fabric and one more floss. So I went to Fire Poppies. I got my one little floss that I needed. And I am going to do this on a piece of 18 count parchment. Oh my gosh, that's big. Now it doesn't need to be this wide, but it needs to be that long. So I will have extra. Um, but yeah, this is parchment. Oh my God. I cannot rave enough about fire poppies. I love fire poppies. They have fantastic customer service and every order I've placed with them, they get out either the same day or the next morning. It's such fast shipping. Um, and what I've started doing is they sell by the quarter, quarter yard. Yeah, no, eighth. They sell by the eighth. Um, and depending on like how, what size you need, determines how many eighths you need. So I usually just call and I say, this is the size, the dimensions that I need, how many, what quantity should I order? And they tell me what quantity to order and then they surge it and it's lovely. And like I said, they, they ship so fast. So, so, so fast. So if you are wanting to do the Lizzie Kate three little words, or if you have them in your stash and you're looking for an excuse to start them, Hashtag three little words, B-Day sale, November 29th. So that's that. And then plans. So this week I plan to Seasons in Chalk, Early Americans, Little Sheep, Quilty Love, A Strand a Day on Mistletoe Lane. So everything I've showed you. Um, there's three other things. I don't know what they are. I think I'm doing the year in chalk for December. I don't know. I can't. I have a, I have a calendar, but it's on the computer that I'm filming on. So I can't. Look that up. So that's my plans to just stick with my weekly items. And then we're doing something exciting. So not only is my birthday at the end of the month, but my daughter's birthday is at the end of the month too. Mine's the 29th, hers is the 28th, and she will be 13. And she is at that age where she's not quite a teenager. So for her birthday, she doesn't want like clothes and shoes and stuff. Which, like, when you turn teenager, that's what you want. But she's not a kid, so she doesn't play with toys or anything. So we're having like this, like, I don't know what to get her. We've I've asked her, like, five or six times. And she doesn't know. She, she doesn't know. So we are going to learn to knit together. Um, and that's one of her presents. I have knit before. I know how to knit. I know how to purl. That's it. I know how to do those two things. Um, and I started a baby blanket and I got about three quarters of the way done. And 
then my baby was like four. So I never finished it. But she's been knitting on looms like a mad woman. She, she whips through stuff so quickly. And I said to her, hey, I'm wanting to knit something. Would you be interested in me printing the pattern for you also and buying you the right size needles and some yarn and we can knit this together? And she was like, let me see if I can do it. I guess. <laughs> so I took that as an enthusiastic yes, and I'm running with it. And so that is one of her presents for her birthday. <laughs> I guess. But we are going to knit this cowl. Ladybythebay.com. I don't know what this is called. I will link it below. I'm excited. Knit two, purl two. Repeat round one until you've used up most of the yarn or until desired height. Perfect. I know how to knit and purl. And so I won't teach her. I will pull up a YouTube that will teach her how to knit and to purl. She does not learn well from me. I do not teach her well. We're like oil and water. <laughs> And so I just know, I just know, there's just some things that if she needs to learn how to do something, it's not my job to teach her. It's my job to find the right person and the right way to teach her. And so a nice, kind lady on YouTube is going to be the perfect person to teach her how to knit and purl. But we are going to start these, I think, this week. So I'm showing that because I'm going to run out and get our yarn and our needles and we are going to start knitting this probably this coming weekend and so I won't film another video until next Monday but I might have a knitting whip to show you and if she is not difficult I might have you two knitting whips I might have two knitting whips to show you so that is part of our plans I'm very excited I'm very excited to branch out um, I love cross stitching and it is one of those hobbies where you can get kind of obsessed and you've got to do this and this and this and this and this. And you've got to do all the things and order all the things and have all the things and finish all the things. But then like 5% of the time, I want nothing to do with X's. <laughs> I just need a break and I still want to be doing something productive. Um, I originally started cross stitching lots of tangents today. I originally started cross stitching because I had extremely high blood pressure. It's my brother's birthday today. Um, I had extremely high blood pressure that medication was not bringing down on its own. And we were, I was going back weekly, bi-weekly. We were trying all different medications. And my doctor said, can you find a hobby Find something to do that will be relaxing. And I cross-stitched 8,000 years ago. When I was little, my grandmother taught me. But I hadn't done it in, I don't, I don't even, decades. And so I picked up a piece and made X's. And when I went in the following week for my blood pressure check, I don't know if she had hit the sweet spot with my medication or if the medication and finding something to focus on had done the trick because my blood pressure is like perfect now. Now I'm still on medication, but, um, so I just kind of stuck with the cross stitching and this was last January. So now I'm kind of obsessed, but that's why I originally started and I still love it. But occasionally, I'm like, well, and I wanted, I wanted something to do other than play games on my phone or eat because <laughs> that's what I was doing before and that wasn't working for me. But I have, a, I have a giveaway today. I have this pattern. It's called By Her Hand by La Dee Da. This is copyright 2002. 
So this is kind of an older pattern. Let me see if I can get that closer. It's very pretty. It says by her hand and then the name and the date and then the alphabet underneath. And I just, I will never stitch this. It is absolutely beautiful. I will never stitch this. It's in like pristine condition other than the sticker from the shop. They put it right on there. And I tried to like see if I could peel it off, but it won't. It just won't. So, um, so to win this, um, I will... I'll announce on a winner next Monday. If I do a video next Monday, I should. Um, but use the word, so like the video and leave a comment. And in the comment, use the word hand, hand. And I will random comment picker for this pattern next week. So that is all I have this week. Look out for that ornament finishing video and part one of my whip bins and then next week will be part two of the whip bins and I should be back next Monday with another floss tube and hopefully some knitting to show you so until then thank you for watching and I hope everyone is super blessed bye